Hi everyone, here is an example problem for the second discussion in Introduction to Analytics. And in this particular problem, we're going to be looking at a video from a YouTube page called Data is Beautiful. And this one contains information about the population of the 10 largest U.S. cities between 17, 1776 and the present. Looks a little something like this. Let me have a cameo. There we go. We have to watch that video and we are asked from watching that video, use the information to compile some data. We need to figure out what the population change was for Los Angeles and Philly from the period of 1920 to 2020 for the sake of brevity. So we don't have to do a hundred different lines. We're only going to take it in 10 year intervals. So 1920, 1930, 1940, etc. For each interval, we need to determine the change in the city's population over that decade and we're going to have track this in both terms of raw numbers how many people it changed by but also percentage what was the percentage of change the video actually goes until the year 2035 it's not 2035 right now so we have a bit of what they call extrapolation they're making predictions about what the population of these cities will be in the future we want to make note of what their projection is for the population of los angeles and philadelphia respectively in the year 2030 as we're compiling our data we want to make sure that we have all of the spots that we need to be able to get information about the average change that we have because we're going to be asked uh, in here to conclude if there's any outliers, what the mean and median percentage of change was for every 10 year interval for each of these cities. According to the mean and the median that we are going to use, what should the population be in 2030? And we're going to compare that predicted population from our numbers to what the video has to see if it aligns with the projection. So let's start by compiling some information. What we're going to want to do is grab our video right here. And we're looking for the period of 1920 to 2020 in 10 year intervals. Thankfully, this video has a little uh, year tracker down on the side so we can scroll on over until we get to a period that's somewhere around 1920. And I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to skip this ad. Because thank you, YouTube. There we go. And we've got a set of numbers. So all you have to do is when it gets to that certain period in time, let me do that again without the, the video here. When it gets to the period in time that you want, try to pause as quickly as you can after it changes to the year that you want. So I want 1920. I hit pause right there. These are big numbers. They're tracking incredibly fast. You're going to come up with different numbers because no one's going to click pause at the same exact moment. It's okay. As long as you're in the ballpark, you should be good to go. So what do we need to do? We need to keep track of the population changes for Los Angeles and Philadelphia over the 100 year span between 1920 to 2020 in 10 year intervals. Well, I'm gonna want a spreadsheet to do that. So I'm going to bring over a brand new spreadsheet. The information that I am gonna want is for Los Angeles and Philly. Let's start with Los Angeles. Make a table so I can start keeping track of stuff in here. We're going to want to keep track by the year. We're going to want to denote what the population was according to the video on that year. We're going to want to denote what the change was in terms of numbers. And we're also going to want to denote what the percentage of change was. So I'm going to make a column for each of these four things. Uh, I can make these areas wider by highlighting all of the columns that I want, right clicking, hitting column width, and I'm just going to change it to something that's easily visible. So we'll say for like 15. There we go. Uh, and then for Los Angeles, why don't I just go and merge and center that column so it looks like a proper header. I'm just making stuff look pretty to work with. And we can even underline it if we wish. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now I'm ready to start keeping track of information. So back to our video over here for Los Angeles. What was the population in Los Angeles? For 1920, I have 591,530. I'm going to bring that in to my spreadsheet. So in 1920, we had a population of 591,530. We don't have any change because this is our first year of information. We don't have any change percentage. I also have to keep track of Philadelphia. So down below somewhere to give myself enough space to put all my years in, I want to put Philadelphia. Let's figure out that space first. I know I want 10 year intervals. So I want 1930, 1940, 
etc. Well, Excel can track a change in something. So if I highlight all three of these and I grab the fill handle in the corner, it knows now that I want to increase by 10 years each time. You can see it from that little box down in the corner. And I want it till 2020. So I'm going to fill that number in. But part of the information as well says uh, to keep track of what their prediction was for 2030. So I'm actually going to do 2030. And I want a table for Philadelphia for the same information. So what I can do is I can just highlight everything that I have here. Control C, Control V, and we'll make this one for Philadelphia. And now we're ready to start tracking some information here. What was Philadelphia's population in 1920? Well, we can go through and it says on our video that Philadelphia's population was 1,826,636. So I can go and I can fill in that number. This can be kind of a pain to keep moving things around. An easier way to get both of the pieces of information on your screen at once if you're using one monitor uh, is to split the screen. If you have a Windows computer, you can hold down the Windows key and hit the right area and it'll move one thing to the side and then you can click on the other thing that you want on the left hand side. I want this and now I have the ability to look at both of them at once. If you're using a Mac, it's the same thing, but you have to hold down the command key. So for Philadelphia's population, we have 1826636 for that period. Let's go forward and find the time that we want here. So 1930 would be our next spot. We can go, I'm going to skip till I get to somewhere close to 1930. I got 1928 right now. I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to pause as fast as I can after it changes to 1930. And we see in 1930, Los Angeles population had exploded up to 1,243,790. For Philadelphia, their population is at 1,950,537. So I'm just compiling some information. But now we do have a change. That's how much Los Angeles' population increased during this 10-year interval. Well, I can figure that out with a formula. If I can get in the right cell, which I want to put here into cell C4. How much did it increase? Take what it was in 1930. Subtract out what it was in 1920. And you get, in this case, a little over 652,000. What percent of change is that? Well, you can find the percent of change by taking the amount of change that happened during the period and dividing by what it was prior to that period beginning. So if population was 591,530 in 1920 and it increased by 652,264 in that 10-year period, it's a massive increase to population, over 100%. Speaking of, this looks ugly. I, li I like to make my numbers look nice. So what I can do here is I can highlight all of the spots that I want to have for the numbers, the population in terms of how many people there were and what the change was. And I'm gonna to go to the formatting up here and I'm gonna change it to accounting, which is, or comma style, excuse me, which is this little comma right here. I don't want the decimals because you can't have a fraction of a person. So I'm gonna decrease the decimal twice. That just looks better to me. What about over here with percentages? I'm going to go highlight the same areas that I'm going to fill in there. And when I go up here, I'm going to click the percentage button. I like some decimals here because percentages might be small enough. So let's go to two spots. So there we go. Now that looks much better. Population increased by 652,264. That is a 110.27% increase over that 10 year period. Well, what about Philadelphia over here? How much did that change? Well, let's do the same thing that we did before. The population in the current period minus the population that it was at the start of the period and that's an increase of 123,901 for the percent of change I'm just going to take the amount of change that we had I'm going to divide it by what the population was prior to the period starting and now just like I did above I'm going to have both of these at once I am going to format it to make it a little prettier so comma style get rid of the decimals in this column over here, I want percentage. And I'm going to give myself two decimal places right there. We see Philadelphia's population increased by 123,901 during the period. That is a 6.78% increase. Next year I need is 1940, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm on 1938 right now. Hit play. 
pause as fast as I can when it changes to 1940 and keep track of my numbers. Philadelphia's population, as we can see in the video over there, is 1,934,237. And for Philadelphia's population, or sorry, whoops, I'm looking at the wrong one. Los Angeles' population, my bad, is 1,513,922. And Philadelphia's population is 1,934,237, according to the stock. For the change, it's the same concept. We're going to have this be equal to what it is now minus what it was before. That's an increase of 270,128. To find the percent of change, we're going to say that it is equal to how much it changed divided by what it was before. And Los Angeles' population still increased by 21.72% during the 1930s. What about for Philadelphia? Well, we're going to go, we're going to say this is equal to what it is in 1940 minus what it was in 1930. And there's a decrease of 16,300 people. Find that uh, as a percentage, and it's going to be equal to the change that we had divided by what the population was in the year before. And that comes out to a decrease of 0.84%. So Philadelphia's population actually declined in the 1930s up until the point in 1940. And I'm just going to continue to do this for all of the information. I don't think anybody wants to sit here and watch me do this for the next 10-15 minutes, just grabbing numbers. Uh, so I'll see you in part two of this video.